Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Adora Salido here. And today we're going to be talking about something a little bit different um, to what I normally uh, talk about on my channel. Today we are going to be talking about what is currently happening in Nigeria. It's not um, something new, it's something that has been going on for many, many years and um, it is something that people are finally sick and tired of and people, especially young people of Nigeria, have decided to take a stand against. So if you're not Nigerian or you've been living under a rock or you just, you know, don't know what's going on, um, the young people of Nigeria have been protesting for quite a few days. It's been over a week now. I believe that they've been out in the streets protesting against police brutality happening in Nigeria and more specifically against the um, actions of SARS, which is a special unit of the Nigerian police force. And SARS stands for Special Anti-Robbery Squad. And um, they have been doing a lot. Um, so basically, the young people of Nigeria are asking for uh, an end to SARS because of the heinous crimes that they have basically committed. And their actions range from harassing, extorting, um, sexual violence, uh, physical violence against young people, and, you know, in worst case scenarios, even killing people unjustly and, you know, people have had so many stories and run-ins with uh, SARS officials and it's never for anything, you know, important. It's never that, you know, they raided a building and, you know, they, they were suspecting a group somewhere and they raided a building. It's always something stupid like seeing somebody walking down the street in a nice outfit or seeing a young person with an iPhone or a nice car and basically, you know, harassing them for those things and basically trying to extort or arrest them and kill them for no good reason. And basically the Nigerian youth are just asking not to be killed unjustly and not to be arrested or detained uh, unjustly and you know I feel like this happens a lot we've been going through this a lot this is not the first time people have protested against SARS but it's a thing that happens every time people come out people speak out and then we get some version of oh yeah no we're ending it but it doesn't actually end and you know false promises but this time people have said enough is enough people are going out day after day and speaking out and making sure that we are heard and which is why I thought it was important for me to do this video. I wanted to share my experience with SARS um because I actually had a run in with them this time last year. I think it's important for everyone whether you're out physically protesting, whether you're online tweeting and retweeting and sharing other people's stories. I think it's important. I think it's important for all of us to donate to the uh, people that are organizing and helping out uh, protesters and people that have been arrested by SARS. I think whatever you can do, I think you should do. I think we should keep going. We should not lose momentum. We shouldn't lose focus. And whatever, in whatever way you can help, I think we should all help. Story with SARS. And it's really wild because I remember, I didn't even realize it was literally exactly a year ago. Today, um, I just remember looking through the family group chat where I had sent a message basically telling them that I had a run in with SARS and I was reading that message and it made me feel so sad um, about everything that's going on because my message was, um, I remember saying, hey guys, I just had a run in with SARS. Luckily, all they did was extort money from me, I'm fine. And that's crazy that a unit of the police force so, like a group that's meant to be there to protect us the best case scenario for me and the best case scenario for a lot of people is that all they do is extort money from you because the things that they have done the stories I have heard the stories are actually horrifying um so yeah I just knew that for me the fact that I was only you know extorted and they all they did was take money from me was the best case scenario and that's disgusting Anyway, so my run-in with SARS, this happened maybe exact, yes, it was exactly a year ago today, um, the 15th of October, and 
yeah, I'll double check. But yeah, it's definitely the 15th of October. Um, I remember it was in the afternoon, maybe around 2 p.m. or so in Abuja. This is when I was still living in Nigeria. This was around 2 p.m. around that. And I remember we were just driving somewhere to quickly pick up something. Um, I just left my office. It was during the week. I just left the office and I, I was just going to quickly pick something up and come back. And we were driving under this bridge in Abuja, uh, somewhere around um, Jab the Jabi area. We're driving under a bridge and I wasn't paying attention, but I just, you know, noticed how we're pulling to the side. We're getting pulled over. That's not a new experience for me in Abuja. I feel like I was pulled over by road safety people a lot. I've pulled over by just road safety all the time, basically. Um, I don't know. So yeah, I, at first I wasn't paying attention. So when we start pulling over, I just assumed it was another road safety check. But then I look up and I see these men in, and they're not wearing uniform, they're just wearing black, like black t-shirts and black trousers and they had these big guns and they basically were blocking the street. And it was a very quiet um, road, it was under a bridge, so there was no shops or anything, there was no one around. And it's only the cars that were passing that were around um so i remember I, immediately i was terrified because the first thing that came to my mind was is this are these robbers what's going on um but then i start looking around and noticing what was going on and it was uh, a couple of men all wearing black in gu with guns and one of them had the word sars printed um on his t-shirt and there was a van i think it said police or it said sars as well they had a van um so I still was not, I was still terrified because um, whether it was armed robbers or SARS, the outcome could still be the same. I was still so scared because I'd heard all the stories about SARS. I knew what they were like. So I didn't know what to expect. So immediately it kind of put my phone away <laughs> because I didn't want them, you know, taking my phone or whatever. I put my phone away, you know, kind of kicked my bag under my like I was trying to you know shove my bag um on the floor and stuff um and I remember you know we pulled over I was like I'm just gonna be really calm I was with the with there's just me and my driver and the officer came around and he said they were looking for a stolen car so the first thing I noticed when he said that was that they had pulled over two other cars and those two other cars looked absolutely nothing like ours. There was even a taxi as well. One of the cars was a taxi. So immediately I was confused because if you're looking for a stolen car, shouldn't you be stopping cars that are similar to the stolen car? Or do you know nothing about what the car looked like? So why are you stopping three different cars that look completely different? Anyway, it was fine because obviously our car wasn't stolen. So I thought, okay, this should be quick. We have all our documentation. My driver had his driver's license. Everything was complete. You know, we've had run-ins with road safety, so <laughs> everything was complete. So the guy starts checking. He's asking for all the papers, everything, and everything was complete. So he checks, he walks away, comes back with the papers. So he just kept walking off and coming back. And we were confused by this point. So my driver starts asking him, you know, what's the problem? And I can't remember what he was saying, but he starts getting angry. I think he was annoyed that, you know, my driver was asking him why it was taking so long. So he just gets angry and he's shouting. And I think he starts picking at things. Like he was asking why the documents were photocopied. And he was asking why the driver's license was photocopied and why it wasn't an original. Oh my God, I just knew I was not, you know, that I was not leaving that place anytime soon. So he was just, he was getting very erratic. He started threatening us that he was going to arrest us. Um, and he was going to take the car or, yeah, we should just saying we would like, would be arrested. And this is when I start, I was so confused because I don't understand how this situation had escalated to this point. So at this point, the driver jumps out and the driver's trying to talk to him and trying to figure out, you know, what the problem was because at this point he actually hadn't given us any reason he just starts nitpicking at random things and just getting very erratic and saying he was going to arrest us 
and I knew I was not going to get arrested. I've heard the stories of people that got arrested and detained. It was not going to be me. So I just sat in the car. I was shaking. I couldn't even speak. I couldn't even, I was just shaking and I was praying that everything would work out. And then eventually uh, my driver comes back and he's just as confused as I am basically. And eventually the, the guy comes back and he says something. He just says, um, <laughs> I remember exactly. He said, police car no go use fuel. Like, so I'm like confused because he's kind of talking to me at this point. And I didn't, at first I didn't understand what he was, he meant. He was just saying, he just said, police car no go use fuel. And I'm just like, sorry, uh, what was going on? And so my driver goes, basically you need to pay to feel the car like they want money basically if we're gonna get out of it so i was just like oh wow so all of this all of the theatrics and threatening to arrest and everything was to basically ask us for money so at this point i didn't i didn't even really have cash at the time so i was <laughs> i was like oh god um anything to get out of this situation basically um so yeah I'm, at this point i'm trying to scramble to see what i had and i remember the guy was just basically telling us that you know if we don't bring something we should forget about leaving that place and i just remember i <laughs> i was so grateful to you know be able to get out of that because i didn't know how it could have escalated and what could have happened it is actually very unfortunate that these acts of violence and oppression and injustices actually comes from the people that are actually meant to protect us um, and our property and it's actually very very sad and heartbreaking to see and hear the stories and read what's actually happening but I'm so 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 grateful for all the people that are out there risking their lives um, actually protesting and for the you know young people of nigeria that have been able to mobilize and organize protests across the country in many many different states they have organized um food uh legal uh fees and lawyers and you know even medical bills and security private security and it is so incredible to see the women have been nothing short of extraordinary and i think as amazing as these things are and these what these people are doing i think it's important for all of us to do our part if you're not in nigeria you can also do your part to help out um i think different countries are having their different protests and if for whatever reason you can't physically be out there to protest you can still lend your voice i think it's important to keep tweeting keep talking about it on Facebook, keep talking about it on Instagram, wherever it is online, keep talking, keep spreading the message, keep um, all these politicians and people accountable. Um, I think it's also important to donate all the amazing work that these people are doing. They are doing it with uh, donations and I think that we should all donate. That is everything. Um, for today, I am praying for a new Nigeria. I am praying for a better Nigeria. I am so happy to see that we are fighting for change and hopefully we will get the change that we demand.